Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for being here. Um, that was a great uh, presentation. Um, you had a very self-explanatory title, um, and I don't have the title is not so uh, self-explanatory. I will explain what I mean with inequality configurations. It's uh, joint work with Eva Wegner and Leticia Barbabella. We're all in Marburg University in, in Germany. <clears throat> so the paper is really about multidimensional inequality. And um, so there's quite a lot of work on multidimensional inequality. And the idea um, of the literature is basically to take this sense capability approach and to acknowledge that well-being it depends not only on income, but on other dimensions like health and, and other stuff. And so if we focus only on income, we are missing part of well-being. And if we want to measure inequality and we don't focus and incorporate health and all these other things, then we are not measuring inequality of well-being properly, right? So if it turns out that the people that have high income are also the more healthy ones, is different if than the situation where those that have high income have bad health, right? If you think of overall well-being inequality. So um, the idea is to then uh, take into account these different dimensions, right? And so at the beginning, like the, um, the literature was taking into account like education and health, and then um, other uh, dimensions have been included. Right? But <clears throat> I, I come to the idea of, of multidimensional inequality in a, in a, from a different perspective. Uh, and this is a bit what I would like to bring here. That is that uh, I come to it like more from looking at literature on inequality in other disciplines, in political science and in social psychology and so on. Right? And there has been an explosion of um, literature in these other disciplines to try to understand inequality and to see the relation between uh, income inequality and this other source of inequality, like in terms of political participation, political influence, um, self-efficacy, and so on in social psychology. Right? So <clears throat> there have been like lots of interests, and um, what there are like two different types of approaches that have been used. Like one is to focus on the micro approach to see if, for example, there's a correlation because between where you are in the income distribution and where you are in this other distribution in terms of political power, political participation, and so on. Right? That would be the micro approach. But there has also been some, what I call the macro approach, where what they are doing is basically compute inequality on their dimension, on political participation, and linking to inequality in income, right, at the macro country level perspective. So, um, what we want to do in this paper is to focus on this multidimensional inequality, basically from this perspective, um, to try to understand how different types of inequality relate. So our, our aim is not to try to measure inequality in well-being like more accurately. It's to try to understand how inequalities of different dimensions, like given by different disciplines, um, relate. Right? Um, and we do it from a macro perspective, right? Uh, and so the aim is really not to measure, it's really to understand the structure of inequality. So if you start thinking in this way, uh, like there are like several questions that emerge, right? Like something like, uh, do these different dimensions of inequality, inequality in political participation, in self-efficacy, in health, and so on, are they sort of driven by some single underlying dimension, or are there rather like, do they emerge from domain-specific forces, right? So you have in some places a lot of political participation in inequality for political reasons, like things that have to do with institutions and stuff. Or is there just something that is like, there are countries that are just unequal in everything, right? Or are there different types of inequality that relate, but others don't, right? And so in the end, uh, so some go together, but others not, or some types of inequality are traded off, right? Like there are some countries that maybe have a lot of economic inequality, but lower social inequality or political power inequality. So this is what I, um, the aim of the paper is to sort of understand and describe these patterns. And this is what we call these inequality configurations. So the inequality configuration is at a macro level, uh, sort of the amounts of inequality in the different domains that a country has. So it's a very simple descriptive paper. Um, so there has been 
like some effort collecting data on these different uh, types of uh, inequality dimensions, but then the analysis is totally trivial. We're going to do some principal component analysis and some cluster analysis and that's all. So there's nothing fancy. Okay, so the first thing that we, um, we, were, we needed when we were thinking about these questions is how do we actually think about these questions? It's not straightforward. How do we think about which type of inequalities relate and which don't? And we came up with four type of frameworks or hypotheses. Um, the first one, well, the first two ones are very straightforward and I already mentioned them, right? So one could be that all these inequalities are related. So there's actually just one underlying dimension of inequality that manifests in the different dimensions. The second possibility is that they are domain specific, as, it, as I mentioned before. But there are two uh, frameworks from the literature that I think that are quite interesting and that we use to guide uh, sort of our thinking uh, about the matter. So one comes from Terborn, so he's a sociologist, and he has this book on inequality where he basically it's, it's not very empirically, I mean, it has some empirically uh, stuff, but basically it's, it's, it's very much something like theoritizing in a sort of simple way, right? And what he basically argues is that there are different dimensions of human life that uh, lead to different dimensions of inequality. So you say that, okay, so as humans, we are like organisms, we are persons, and we are actors. And these different uh, dimensions of human life translate into a different dimension of inequality. So what he calls being humans of organisms would be vital inequality, inequality in health type of issues. Humans as persons is that we seek respect um, and status and autonomy, right? And this is what he calls existential inequality. And then humans as actors is that we need resources and we want to act and we are agents. And so this then leads to inequality in income, political participation, and, and power, and so on, okay? And so in some sense, you could think that this could be a framework that uh, generates different types of um, relations between inequality, right? So that you could expect that there's a relation between inequality in income, political participation, and power, and so on, that is distinct from inequality in terms of respect and autonomy, and so on, okay? Now, the other framework comes from um, one of the many Piketty books that I think that now he's publishing a lot. So that was like Capital and Ideology, a very big one. Um, and he, he doesn't say this specifically. So this is something that we draw from, from the, the discussion in the book, right? So this is empirically based, like with lots of historical uh, evidence and so on, right? And he talks basically of different types of inequality regimes in different societies, right? So he talks about in that, that have happened in history. Like there are like slave societies, ternary societies, ownership societies, and so on. And from how he talks about them, one can derive uh, expectations about the economic inequality and the social political inequality involved in those regimes. So, um, so the slave and colonial societies would be the most unequal in everything, economic and socially. The ownership societies were those that um, came up after the French Revolution, particularly in Europe, right? And so these were places that had very high economic inequality, but in terms of social and political inequality, it was supposed to be lower. And this contrasts with what he calls the ternary societies, which were those that came before, like the extreme version would be like some medieval type of societies, where the economic inequality was not so high, but from a social and political uh, perspective, the inequality was huge. So it was clear that there were classes that had more status and more political power, and that was sort of stuff. Okay? And so then there's the social democratic societies that were low inequality and everything. So again, different dimensions that go together. Right? The social and political in this case, and the economic as a separate thing. Okay, so this is basically the, the frameworks that we have to think about the problem. And so what is the data? What are the variables that we use? So we measure... Um, inequality using Gini coefficients, and we use income, where we use the wheat, precisely. Um, then we are going to focus on health, and in particular on length of life. So we are going to compute inequality on length of life. If 
uh, everyone dies at age 80, there's a lot of equality in, in length of life. If many people die when they, are, when they are young, or when they are like babies, and other people like die very uh, old, then there's a lot of inequality in length of life. So demogra demographers have studied that a lot. Political participation. So this is like the amount of um, political actions that you undertake, like protests, signing petitions, and so on. Political influence. This is, the, you will see this comes from surveys, and these are surveys about whether you perceive that your MP or your local representative um, pays attention to you, to people like you, okay? Social class, um, so this, is, this also comes from surveys, and this is self-reported, the social class you belong to, whether you are upper class, middle, middle upper, lower middle, working class maybe in some surveys, and lower class. And self-efficacy, that also comes from surveys, and this is about whether you think that it is you or the environment that controls what happens. Okay, so of all these things, we are going to compute Gini coefficients. Okay, so we are going to study why we are going to compute the inequality of all these things. Okay, so one thing that is important is that we are not going to relate income or education to these things. We are going to see what is the inequality of this stuff. Okay, so the idea is that in this social class, an equal country is that where more or less everyone says that they are middle class. If there's a country that some people say they are upper class and some people, many people say that they are lower class, this is a highly unequal country from the social uh, point of view. <clears throat> okay, so the data sources, so as I said, the income comes from the wheat, um, very useful uh, having all the countries because we were having lots of constraints for the other measures. Well, for the, the health, the length of life, not so much. They are the WHO life tables from which you can compute unique coefficients. Um, but the other variables were tough, so they, they come from surveys. They come from the World Value Survey and European Value Survey, but uh, also from other surveys, the International Social Science, uh, social, um, um, now it doesn't come, my ESSP and ESS, uh, Social Survey, European Social Survey, International Social Survey, and the Afrobarometer and Latino Barometer and so on. And then we have a few imputed. But most come from the World Value Survey and the European Value Survey. Okay, and then we have, so our full data has data from 108 countries. I have the six variables I have discussed. And then for robustness, we use only the World Value Survey, right, to make sure that our, our clusters of countries don't come from different data sources. And the trade-off here is that the World Value Survey has fewer countries, um, but it's homogeneous, but it doesn't have social class or political influence. So we do the full, uh, the analysis with the full data and then for robustness with the, full, with the world value survey. Okay, and there's one issue that is important about um, inequality measurement when you deal with this type of variables. Um, so for income, there's no problem, right? So, so we use the, the Gini coefficients that come from this the wheat companion. But all the other variables are bounded. And this makes a difference about how we interpret inequality. So I have here some uh, made up distributions to illustrate the idea. So if I show you this distribution, so I don't know what you might think, but I tell you what I think. I think like, wow, this looks like a fairly equal distribution, right? So there are lots of people in the middle. There are a few poor people, but everyone is more or less similar. Now, if I tell you, well, actually, this variable is bounded between 0 and 10. You cannot have more than 10. And so it actually looks like this, right? And when I look at this, to me, it feels, no, actually, there's quite a lot of inequality here. There's a lot of distance between the two, right? And, and there's a reason why I perceive more inequality here. And the reason is because there's no way with this average level of resources that we have here, to have a more equal, unequal distribution than this. So this is as unequal, given the resources that there are, the way they are distributed are as unequally as they can. But this is not the case here, because you could take 
um, some of these people, right, could do a regressive transfer so that you end up, because there are no bounds, you end up with someone being really, really rich. Right? But here you can't. Yeah, thanks. And then in contrast, this one um, looks more equal, right? Because there's scope for increasing inequality here if the bounds are the same from zero to 10. Okay, so what this means is that, so if we use the standard Gini coefficient actually, so these two distributions are the same, so they give a Gini coefficient of 0 0.1, so fairly equal. Right? Whereas this gives a Gini coefficient of 0 0.2. So what this, there are people that have been like thinking about that, right? And so what we do is to uh, adjust the Gini following a, a fairly recent paper that deals with this issue of bounded variables. And basically what this adjustment does is divide the Gini coefficient but the maximum possible Gini coefficient that you can have given your average. And this is what we do. Okay, so then this one, the way we are going to calculate it has a Gini coefficient of one because there's no way it can be more unequal. And this has 0 0.7. Okay, so let me go to the, <coughs> to the results. So first, we do this principal component analysis. Uh, so this is just precisely to see um, to reduce the dimensionality of these components and to see uh, which dimensions go together, right? And if they're in the end like one dimension that generates all the inequalities or they are separate. Um, so basically you can think if there's a cloud with two dimensions and they are like very related, you can actually reduce the dimensionality by just focusing on the linear combination of the two, right? And you don't lose a lot of information. So this is what this does. And so here, you had the first thing that we show is the um, proportion of the variance explained by the different components, right? And what this shows is that the first component explains almost 50% of the variance. So a lot of these components are very correlated, like the example I was giving like this. But then there's still 50% of the variance to be explained, right, by the other components. So, um, we use a bit of a rule of thumb if you want, like I think like if, if then all the components, um, if, if, no first, if, if no component had more impact than the other, then they would all uh, explain around 16%, so 0.16, right? So basically we take the first and the second uh, component, but it's very clear that the first one explains a lot. And so basically in some sense, this is the main result of the paper. So how are inequalities related, these different inequalities? And the first component, the one that explains a lot of the variance, indeed then uh, has as loadings um, lots of these components. Actually, all components load positively. But then, a little bit arbitrary to a certain extent, but we, thanks, we then consider the um, components that load the most, and this is income inequality, the length of life health inequality, self-efficacy, and social class. So this is the first component. So this would be some socioeconomic, psychological, inequality. But for the political variables, load less. And the political variables actually load into the second component. So what this means is that there are two orthogonal components, one that has to do with socioeconomic and psychological issues, and the other one that has to do with political issues. Okay, and then we can draw all the countries uh, using as axis the two components, right? And so the, the horizontal axis is the first component, the socioeconomic health and, and psychological inequality, and then the vertical axis is political inequality. And so <clears throat> you can see the sort of Western European countries uh, and others, but a lot of Western European countries have low inequality in both. At the other extreme, you have African countries and Latin American countries have high inequality of the first component but they differ, for example, in the second component. So Latin American countries apparently have more inequality, more political inequality as measured by the surveys um, than African countries. And then here you have Eastern European countries and Asiatic countries in the middle. We still don't understand exactly why, so we don't have a good story yet as to why this is the case, uh, how political inequality would be so much lower in Africa. Whoops. Okay. Um, is that the zero? Yes. Almost. Okay. So the okay. So it's robust basically. Um, 
but the last thing I wanted to show is like how this uh, then affects a life satisfaction inequality. And the first component correlates strongly with life satisfaction inequality, whereas the second component doesn't. So it feels that inequality in life satisfaction is linked to socioeconomic health and psychological inequalities, but not to political inequality. Okay. And then we have one about the mean of life satisfaction. So is it the case that uh, countries with uh, more of this inequality have lower average life satisfaction? And uh, yes, a little bit, but when we control for low GDP, the coefficient goes down. It remains negative, but and political inequality doesn't do anything. Okay, so I just want to, um, so I don't want to say again the results. So I, I think what, like after like being in this conference, I think for me, what I feel that is interesting and particularly potentially useful of this is that, so there's a lot of work on this inequality of opportunity. And there are like, what's some panels on that? And I think that um, we should start thinking more about these other types of inequality. Um, things that have to do with status of relational inequality, things of inequality in power, things that maybe are a bit outside of what we do normally, but I think are really important. And, and I think we don't have measures of that. And I think we should really improve and pay more attention to that. And I think that from the point of view of, of the normative thinking about inequality, what inequality does, I think is really important. And, and this in, in, in the, the political philosophers have now like this issue of relation and inequality has become really important, but we are not really taking much attention to that. So we, we got stuck with the lack egalitarians talking about inequality of opportunity, but there are people talking about other things now. And I think we should join uh, this conversation. And, and I think that it makes sense in some way that, like I, I was relatively happy in thinking that way about our results, because indeed, like if you think of like social psychological inequalities, they, they do relate or, or it makes sense that they are related and they have to do with well-being. And political inequality is different. It's not so much about well-being, right? But it's about power, and it matters as well. So I think that we, we need to think about this. Thank you.